So today, I thought I could give you my top five tips to help improve your workflow inside of Ableton Live. Now, we did a similar video a couple of weeks ago for Logic Pro X, and you all seem to thoroughly enjoy that vid. And it's been a while since we did an Ableton Live tutorial, so I thought we better boot up the software. Hey, what's up? I hope you're having a fantastic day and welcome back to another video. Now today, I thought I could share with you some of the shortcuts I frequently use inside of Ableton Live that really does improve my music production workflow. So the first thing I wanna share with you is what is called zoom in and zoom out selection. Now previously inside of Ableton, if you wanted to zoom into a clip or a piece of audio of recording, get the extra detail, you would maybe usually click on it, hold in Alt and then use the scroll wheel to expand the box and you know mess about that way to try and see it enlarge. Now there's a super fast shortcut that we can do to zoom in and zoom out of a specific selection so we can get a more detailed view. And this is by holding in the function key and clicking Z or Z and it will zoom in. You can see that is huge now. We can see exactly what the clip is. And then we can repeat the exact same shortcut by holding in a function and then clicking X to zoom back out and return to the state that we were previously in. And you can see how that will save you so much time just zooming in and zooming out compared to that scroll wheel, which is also very inaccurate and time consuming. Now, the next thing I wanna share with you is a deactivation method that will allow you to sort of test out different variants of a section without making permanent changes such as deleting the clips that you don't wanna hear. So if we drag in another clip onto this timeline, and let's say, for example, we didn't want this clip to be playing anymore and we had other bits of audio. Well, we can click zero on our keyboard and it will deactivate the clip. So this now means when the playhead passes over this and it's playing the section of our track, it's not gonna play the deactivated clip, but we haven't deleted it. So it's still there in our project. So if we then decide, actually, I like this sample being here, we can click on it, click zero once again, and boom, the clip has returned exactly how it was and nothing has changed. And we can do this for not only on a clip by clip basis, we can actually do it on a track basis as well. So we can click on our track here, and we can deactivate the entire track. So you can see, basically we're muting it. So I click zero and it's deactivating that track. So essentially it's just muting it. It's a shortcut to just turn that track off. Now the next one I'm sure you've probably tried out before, and this is called consolidating clips. Now don't click off the video if you think, oh, I've heard about consolidating clips before, because there's something you may not have realized inside of the preferences. Now, if you don't know what consolidating a clip is, this is essentially where we flatten and merge multiple clips together in the same area. So for example, here, I've got these two clips. So I could drag from the 17th bar through to the 33rd bar, and I could do Command J and consolidate that clip. So you can now see that is now an, ent an entity of a clip. It's fully combined and it's went from two separate clips to one full clip. Now there's something that you need to bear in mind inside of the preferences that I'm gonna show you about right now. So let's go into our live preferences. Now the setting that we want to change is the bit depth. So you can see in this record tab over here, right now the bit depth is set to 24. Now this means when I consolidated that little MIDI clip over there and I consolidate it down and we maybe flatten and merge it into an audio file, what's going to happen is it's gonna do that consolidation at 24 bits. So we are actually going to lose quality when we consolidate and then convert that clip down into an audio file. Well, if we switch this out to 32 bit and we increase the bit depth, this now means when we go about doing that consolidate in process, we're no longer gonna have any loss of audio quality because we've increased that bit depth in our preferences. Now the next tip's very, very interesting and it's gonna improve your melody making inside of the MIDI piano roll. Now what we're going to do is we are going to boot up a blank MIDI cell. And then inside of that MIDI cell, we are going to just draw in the scale of which our song is. So I'm just gonna draw in the C major scale for example purposes today so you can see how this will work. Now, once we've drawn in our C major scale, we're going to grab all of those notes within that scale and drag them to the left-hand side before the actual clip begins. So you can see right now, I have got all the notes located to the left-hand side. And then in the top corner 
of our little piano roll here, you can see we have this box called Fold. Now, if we click this button in, it's basically going to remove all of the uh, piano rolls where there isn't a note presence. And it's going to present us with the full scale that we just drew in. And now we can go about by clicking B on our piano roll and start drawing in a melody and it's 100% going to be within the scale because we have it selected over here. So this is going to save you loads of time from drawing in your melodies and then going, oh, I accidentally put a sharp in there and having to adjust it down and drag it around. This is just going to allow you to enhance your creative freedom when creating melodies in the piano roll. Now, before I show you the final tip, if you're enjoying today's video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and also consider subscribing. But while you're down there, be sure to check out the link in the video description for my Ableton Live Performance Basics course. It's basically a beginner's introduction into Ableton Live and using Ableton Live with the intention of using it in your live performances, whether that be triggering samples, using it as a mixer with all the effects, stuff like that, how I use it as a one-man band performer on my live looping rig. Check out the link in the description down below if that's something you're interested in. Now, the final thing I want to share with you is how to optimize your workflow before you actually start working. And this is something that is essential, especially when you're producing music on a regular basis. Now, a majority of time inside of Ableton, Logic, whatever you use, once you've found a formula that works for how you produce tracks, you usually like to repeat that process every single time. So that may be down to the amount of audio tracks you use, the amount of MIDI tracks you use, the types of effects that you have inside of those tracks. And instead of setting this up every single time you want to produce music inside of these softwares, what you can do is you can create a template inside of Ableton. So once you're inside of Ableton Live, you can go about and start creating your template. So for example, we could call this MIDI track keys, this audio track guitars, this audio track here could be called vocals as well. We could add some more tracks in while we're at it. And once we're happy with our template, we can then save this as the default layout. So instead of the default layout booting in like it just did when I launched Ableton Live there, this will be our new default layout. The way we do that is we go up to preferences in the top right corner here and we go down to file and folder. And right at the top here, it says save current set as default. And all you gotta do is you just simply click save and it's going to save all those amendments and changes you made and it will create a brand new template. So every time you start a new set and create a new set inside of Ableton Live, this will be your template to start with, which is fantastic from saving you having to create the audio tracks, MIDI tracks, the effects tracks, every single time you wanna create a new piece of music. Now, if you've enjoyed today's video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and also comment down below what was your favorite tip in today's video. And don't forget to check out that link as well for my Ableton Live Performance Basics course if you're interested in using Ableton Live in your live shows. But as always, I've been Ben Rollins. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.